And we're live. Okay, you ready? Uh. <laughs> um, okay, uh, this is our real first episode. We had a fake one um, that sucked. It was supposed to be about Triple H, but it's... It wasn't about Triple H, though, was it, though, Kaya? No, no. Because we didn't watch enough Triple H material to make an episode about Triple H. We watched one four-minute Triple H match, didn't we, Kaya? Yeah. So that one was a bust. We are, um, the podcast is called Out of the Closet Champions, which I think is very clever. Um, uh, I'm Mikey. I'm Kaya. We are both gay. Well, in some in some formal way, we are in the kind of LGBT community. She's gay. She's gay. I'm bisexual and transgender. And we just need a gay man. <laughs> I know one of those, but he's just the worst. <laughs> you only know one gay man. Oh right, you're 15, of course. <laughs> and you know what? He's only be- he's only gay because he was friends with me in middle school. Your influence. <laughs> um, I would like to read some of the rejected names. Some of my friends were less than helpful. We were considering closet champions because that's also a. But amazing. neither of us are closeted, is the thing. Yeah, as a closet, it's the second best thing. Though. So I asked some friends who do not like wrestling. For an, impo- for an opinion. First mistake. Uh, yeah, that was my first mistake, probably. Uh-huh. I, this was so good, and we would have used it, but someone already took it. Someone did suggest WrestleGania. But it was already a thing, and I cannot stress uh, to you how disappointed we were. It was, like, on the one hand, I'm so happy that there's a podcast called WrestleGania. But on the other hand, I'm We don't have a podcast called WrestleGania. <laughs> Someone suggested Cherry Cheeks, which is complicated. Someone suggested My Sister, My Wrestling Kates, and Me. Love my friends. That's actually kind of good. It's not good. It's only, You only think it's funny because it's a McElroy Brothers reference. Yeah, that's fair. Someone suggested GWO, Gay Wrestling Opinions. And they were delighted when I told them all about the NWO. Suplex D's nuts. <laughs> Thank you, Julia. Thank you, my friend Julia. <laughs> the gay wrestling zone. Again, just a McElroy Brothers joke. Not even a good one. Not nah, the first one was good, you thought? Compared to that one, yeah. I mm, this one's long. <laughs> Do you want to hear it? Hit me. The Elder Scrolls read by my sister and I, and we give our gay opinions about it, and by Elder Scrolls we mean wrestling, and by read we mean watch. Our bio. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was some, that was a trip. From start the to Shackleford day. Singleton siblings will be in Trolls 2, and by Trolls 2 I mean wrestling. Someone also suggested WrestleGania 69, because of course someone suggested WrestleGania 69. But that is not what today is about. No, we thought it would be a fitting intro for our show if we were to talk about LGBT people, both actually gay wrestlers, gay and trans wrestlers, and gay and trans caricatures. Uh, portrayed by typically cishet wrestlers. And I have just the vaguest implication of an outline here. It's more of a list. Okay. Um, and I'm going to, I don't know how many of these you will know about. Um, so far, none. Yeah, I, mean, I know I know gold dust, but that's just... Kaya uh, Kai is looking at my screen and she just looks baffled. Okay, gorgeous George... Um, we need to mention him, because he sort of kicked the whole thing off. And the article that I read, I read a couple of articles about this, just to sort of get in the sort of the headspace, get in the zone. The adventure zone. I fucking hate you, and I'm gonna kill you. (laughs) Uh, I did read a What Culture uh, article about it that I didn't like. (laughs) They were not... I will say sensitive to if the acts that they were praising were actually praiseworthy. I'm going to say that. Gorgeous George is one of those that I would not describe as praiseworthy. It was the 50s. Bad start. (laughs) 
bad start to any story about being gay. And Gorgeous George came out. And he had long blonde hair, and uh, he didn't like it when he got hit, and he had, like, a very gay assistant. It was bad. Like, gang, it wasn't good. I mean, by 50s standards, it was positively woke. But it wasn't good. <laughs> so, I, just, I wanted to mention Gorgeous George, because people often bring him up when you talk about gay wrestling characters. You know, he's and he's an older reference. You know, like I said, it was the 50s. But I do think he deserves an honorable mention in our caricatures section. Can you get an honorable mention as a caricature? I don't think you can. Um, it's it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. So, um, Trish, okay. Trish is lesbian stalker. Okay, we're gonna talk about Mickey James. I like Mickey James. I don't know who that is. Um, I like her. Uh, by the way, for context, Kaya hasn't been watching wrestling that long. But, like, for context, she does not know what most things are. So I know there's gonna be people listening like, Oh, she doesn't even know who Mickey James is? Shut up. Nobody cares. She's 15. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey James was introduced. And, um... I like Mickey James. I think she's a good wrestler. I think she's a lot of fun. When she was first introduced in the WWE, though, she spent a good year just stalking Trish Stratus. So that wasn't great. Because you know this, Kaya. You know straight girls who like a lesbian breeze in their general direction. And they're like, I have a lesbian stalker. No, you don't. A lesbian exists in your proximity. But was she like an actual... Yeah, this was an actual depiction that just sort of validated that weird... That weird gay panic of like, I have a lesbian stalker. You don't. Lesbians have better things to do than stalk you. I can verify this. We do. If I don't know if there are any straight girls listening to this podcast, I don't know why you would be. Okay. Lesbians have better things to do than stalk you. Straight girls, listen, we're not going to stalk you unless we're Mickey James. Uh, Mickey James isn't actually a lesbian, as far as I know. Um, unless we're Mickey James's wrestling persona. But in a lot of these caricatures, I'm not going to get too in depth on the caricatures either, because they make me angry. <laughs> uh, you're gonna, you're gonna see. That um, wrestling is just an exaggerated version of the real world, often reflects a lot of real world bias, such as crazy lesbian stalker stereotypes or hysterical queen stereotypes. You know, just you have wrestling is a way to validate these stereotypes. A lot of different people like wrestling, you know, like most things that are typically associated with a more conservative crowd. Wrestling, NASCAR, whatever, you name it. It's typically associated with poorer people because classism. Rich people watch wrestling too, though. These biases, these societal biases are very much reflected in wrestling. As with all things, this, this is not just a gay thing. It's In fact, it's much clearer with race. Especially with, in Western wrestling, especially with any character who has the faintest hint of an accent, or even Latino characters that do not have accents. The WWF got complaints about Razor Ramon's accent in the 90s. And Razor Ramon just fucking talks like that. That is his real voice. <laughs> so mean. Um, I love Razor Ramon. Just I saying. love Razor Ramon. Razor Ramon's cool as hell. Wasn't digging the outfit, though. Kaya does not- I, we did watch some older, uh, wrestling. Kaya does not care for the looks. <laughs> I will say wrestlers have chronically bad fashion. It, he's wearing neon green <laughs> trunks covered in yellow razor blades. This is the part- <laughs> Who told him that was a good idea? This is the part of the podcast where it really comes out that we're gay. <laughs> Anyway, continue. The rumor come out. <laughs> Let's talk about Billy and Chuck. Billy and Chuck were a tag team. They were presumed to be gay, like a lot of tag teams are. They were presumed to be gay. They had a very over-the-top gay manager who was, I guess technically he was a stylist, whatever. He operated in the same fashion that a manager would. There was actually an episode of SmackDown 
where Billy and Chuck were supposed to get married, and notable LGBT organization GLAD got involved. GLAD denounced the episode afterwards because the fake wedding ritual was interrupted in the middle and played for laughs. And that is not what they were told would, would happen. Are you noticing a pattern? <laughs> Jeez. Are you noticing a pattern? Yeah. Let's talk about gold dust. Oh, boy. Jesus Christ, gold dust. Holy shit, gold dust. That's him as a wrestler. Um, okay, gold dust is better now. <laughs> He's not good now, but it's better. Um, in the 90s, Goldust would come out in, like, full drag. He would have, like, lingerie on over his weird bodysuit. God, we're not an icon. Um, you know what? I would love Goldust if Dustin Rhodes was gay. <laughs> if Dustin Rhodes was gay, Goldust would be my favorite wrestler in the world. But he's not, so he isn't. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Like, if I make trans characters and all of my trans male characters are, like, very feminine men, since I'm a very feminine trans man, that doesn't ring any alarm bells. If you had trans characters and all of your trans characters were just, like, super feminine men, that would be a little suspicious. Because... Yeah. And if you had a bunch of lesbian characters and all of your characters were lesbian stereotypes, that would be like, whatever, because you're a lesbian. If I did that, that would be suspicious. I'm probably, like, out of all of my, like, friends that I have, I'm, like, the manliest person I know. <laughs> yeah, which is, like, I'm not saying that straight men can't pull off feminine. I'm saying straight men can't pull off gay, because they aren't. <laughs> Straight men can absolutely be feminine. Straight men are feminine all the time. You know, your sexuality Unless does not factor... Awful, awful, terrible people. Yeah, sexuality does not factor into your gender presentation. I know straight men especially, because I'm very involved in a lot of alternative so subcultures. Like, I don't know a single goth guy who hasn't worn a ton of makeup, at least sometimes... But, like, I know a lot of straight goth guys, too. So it's like, straight men can do traditionally feminine things and not be offensive. But they can't play gay. And it's not that they're bad at it. It's that the very act of them pretending to be gay for heat is offensive. Because it's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I need to be a joke or I need to be a villain, so I'm going to be gay. There was a weird time when he was tag teaming with R-Truth. I'm not going to get too into it, but... It was, like, rough. It was, like, really rough, Kaya. Oh, no. Let's talk about Velveteen Dream. I used to really like Velveteen Dream. You know, he used to be one of my favorite wrestlers. Until you figured out he was straight. Until I figured out he was straight. Are you noticing a pattern here, Kaya? But you're noticing a pattern of how these, these straight men will use being feminine as... I mean, in Velveteen Dream's case, I will grant Velveteen Dream this. He does not play gay to be a stereotype. He does not play gay to be, you know, he does not play gay to be offensive. That's not his intention, but it is what happens. I, but I have to say, at the very least, it's not his intention, and it's sad that that's where the bar is. On to some better news, though. Let's talk about Pat Patterson. Actually gay. I have in my notes, I have annotated actually gay. Next to certain wrestlers. <laughs> Pat Patterson was openly gay for a long time. Then he joined the WWE. And it didn't get mentioned really until Legends House. Where he referenced that he had a partner. For like 40 years, he was with this dude. I have a quote here uh, from... One of the better articles that I read in preparation for this, Hornet's article, Gay Wrestling Characters, and uh, here's the quote. A true trailblazer, Pat Patterson was openly gay from the start of his Canadian wrestling career during 1958. In 1962, during his time with Pacific Northwest Wrestling in America, he created an effeminate character who wore a beret, sunglasses, lipstick, and made exaggerated gestures with his cigarette holder. 
Think Cruella DeVille. He didn't maintain this character for very long, and after he moved to the World Wrestling Entertainment, his homosexuality never got a mention until the June 2014 finale of the streaming reality show WWE Legends House when he mentioned his longtime partner of 40 years. His partner, Louis Dondero, died in 1998 of a heart attack. End quote. And see, the... What they were describing there. This hyper-feminine man. If a straight guy did that, it would be shitty. But because Pat Patterson did it, it was cool, you know? Yeah. But he had to suppress that because wrestling's a very homophobic sport. Because the thing is, wrestling's a very homoerotic sport. And something straight people do that I will never understand is that when something seems like it could be gay, they will be very homophobic. They will be very homophobic so everyone knows they aren't gay. And it's like, calm down. Nobody cares. Maybe if you hadn't made it such a federal fucking issue to be gay... It wouldn't be such a federal fucking issue that you might possibly be mistaken for gay. So think about that. Spread this to your straight friends. Please. Yeah. <laughs> I have two cishet friends who I speak to regularly. Only one of them likes wrestling. <laughs> Hi, Cisco. I'm making you listen to this, Cisco. Hello. Shout out, yeah. Shout out. Shout out to my friend Cisco for being straight, I guess. Very rarely will you hear that on a podcast like this. It's not, uh, yeah, it's not common. Don't expect many of these. I don't have enough, I don't have enough set friends to do it that often. Now let's talk about Orlando Jordan. Orlando Jordan was a bisexual man. Orlando Jordan, actually bisexual. I will read, uh, Orlando Jordan just is bisexual, and they made it very clear in his TNA entrance that Orlando Jordan was bisexual. Like, he came out, this is a quote from Orlando Jordan's theme song. The women love me, and the guys want to get with me. Orlando Jordan, DTF, baby. Which is so iconic. And he came out, and then there was, like, a pair of lips that opened on the screen, and it had, like, the bi flag, and it had, like, the bisexual symbol, and it had, <laughs> it had him with women and him with men. It, it was over. Shocking! it didn't play into his actual feuds that much. He was just like a pretty stock wrestler when he was actually fighting. Boy, but uh, he really front-loaded the bisexuality is what I'm saying. <laughs> Again, this is a character that if someone who wasn't bisexual did this, it would be very offensive. Not even just if a straight person did this. If a gay man did this, it would be a little offensive. Because <laughs> it's so clearly a bisexual caricature. Yeah. Uh, Sonny Kiss is another example. Sonny Kiss, I love him. He's a very feminine gay man who performs... I won't say he performs as a drag queen. He does perform in an outfit that would not be out of place in a women's wrestling match. Nice. Um, he, he has, you know, he has the sports bra and he has the very tiny trunks. And he comes out and he's got, like, bleached hair and he's got... Wait, is that the one, the one black dude? Yeah, the one black dude, he's... Oh, I right. showed Kaya pictures. I've not shown her the match yet. He I've, was, only, I've only ever seen him, like, do, like, the big, like, flip and then just, like, smack a dude very gaily. That's there the was... You're gonna, um... I have not watched Double or Nothing with Kaya yet, but I plan to. And people who have watched Double or Nothing, uh, and people who have watched, I believe, Progress Pro Wrestling is what he used to, uh, work for. I could be wrong, I don't remember, really. I get all the indies mixed up. Because the thing about indie wrestling is that most indie wrestlers work for at least five indie wrestling companies. So that's rough. But he comes, he comes out, no pun intended, and he has a move where he will get up on the ropes and grab the top rope and use his legs to slam his opponent into the, his ass. And it's it's tight as hell, actually. And again, because Sonny Kiss is gay, this fucking rules. That owns. Because that's just Sonny Kiss's vibe. You know, it's it's it definitely hits that sweet spot of, it is part of Sonny Kiss's character that he is gay. It is part of Sonny Kiss's presentation that he is gay. It is part of Sonny Kiss's everything. Sonny Kiss is gay. You look at Sonny Kiss and you go, that's a gay guy. But it's not a joke, and it's not the only thing about Sonny Kiss. Sonny Kiss is gay, yeah. Sonny Kiss is also a 
goddamn champion. It's nice because for some reason, this is why gay people should write gay characters and trans people should write trans characters and so forth. So for, so on and so forth. Because straight people will hear gay people say, and, and cis people will hear trans people say, LGBT characters shouldn't just be there to be LGBT. And when we say this, we mean your side character who's gay shouldn't get stabbed halfway through the book to teach the straight main character a lesson about friendship or whatever. And your LGBT character should have some defining character traits other than she's the token lesbian. There should be, they should be characters, you know? But for some reason, straight people hear this and go, gay people never talk about being gay, right? And I have to say, if you know a gay or trans person who does not ever talk to you about being gay or trans, it's because they don't trust you. It's because they don't trust you with it. Like, there are a few LGBT people who are like, genuinely don't really want anybody to know. Like, they're out of the closet, but it's not a big deal to them. But by and large, if they never, ever, ever mention it to you, it means they don't trust you. Keep that in mind. Yeah, asshole. <laughs> so, cishet people have this, this hard time portraying LGBT characters as characters who are not there for jokes, who are not there for tokenism. They just are there. They're just there. And Sunny Kiss is just there, you know? He's, he's there, and he's good at what he does. Sunny Kiss is actually a very good wrestler, and people try to say that he's not a good wrestler well, because they're homophobic. Yeah, fuck you, And man. they're like, he's not a... He, and even if Sunny Kiss wasn't a good wrestler and he just relied on the flash of his character or whatever, you can be the best wrestler in the fucking world. If you don't have a character, I don't care about you. Nobody will remember you. You can do the best actual technical wrestling, but people have to remember your face and remember your name to remember who did that very good drop kick. So I'm going to say character work is just as important as the actual wrestling. Just saying, um, if you're an awful, terrible wrestler, but you have a really good character, you're far more likely to get remembered than someone who has an awful character, but is a good wrestler. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I can forgive shoddy wrestling and amazing character work far easier than I can forgive no character work and good wrestling. To the extent that you are not so bad at wrestling that you are putting people in danger. That is a very obvious line that is drawn. But I have, I'm very excited about this bullet point on the list. Nyla Rose. It's not actually bullet points. There's no bullet points on the list, but I'm excited anyways. I want to talk about Nyla Rose, actual by trans woman. Nyla Rose is the first transgender wrestler to be signed to a major wrestling company. Hell yeah. She's, she is a Native American bisexual trans woman. She is very, very strong, and I love her very much. She was in a fatal four-way match on Devil or Nothing, and she totally owned, even though she lost, and she was in there with a cis woman who was just as big as her, which was, you know, nice. That was, that was actually very nice. Awesome Kong also was very good. You're gonna, you're gonna love this match, Kaya. Oh boy. <laughs> Lesbian anticipation. <laughs> there are only two phrases. Lesbian anticipation and gay panic. <laughs> The two gingers. God. <laughs> um, and so there's, uh, on the opposite side of Sunny Kiss and Nyla Rose, who being LGBT is a big part of their gimmick, um, much bigger for Sunny Kiss, I will say, than Nyla Rose. Being native factors into her character much more than being, than being, uh, LGBT. Though being LGBT does factor into her character. Sonya Deville, I wouldn't know that Sonya Deville was gay if I did not seek any outside source. And I'm not saying Sonya Deville, because I know people are saying, but Mikey, the rainbow gear. I know about the rainbow gear. Finn Balor wears rainbow gear too. I'm just saying lots of people wear rainbow gear. Sonya Deville is a lesbian and her character is just that she she's an MMA fighter. She's just tough. Um, Power move. Yeah, she's just tough. Uh, and she does wear, she has uh, this one gear that's white with rainbow accents and she has a handkerchief with the rainbow flag that she wears in her back pocket. It's not overt, but it's not nothing either. Yeah. 
you know, she wants it to be known that she is a lesbian, but she doesn't want that to be her thing, and I respect that. Because there's, you're gonna have characters, uh, I'm saying characters, We're, we've moved out of characters now, these are just... These people are just actually gay. You're, you're gonna have people like Sonny Kiss. You're also gonna have people like Sonya Deville. And there's room for both of those types of people. And I'm gonna skip a bullet, because I did this in a bad order. And we're gonna talk about Finn Balor, who I just mentioned. Now, Finn Balor, insofar as we know, Finn Balor is not gay. He is not out in any way as... LGBT. Not that he could be a lesbian, I guess. He is a man. <laughs> GBT. He's not out as a gay or a gay man. I guess he could be a lesbian if he was a trans woman, but as far as we know, he's a cis man. But Finn Balor is managed to be one of the few presumably cishet people who's not a giant fucking asshole about being gay in wrestling. Finn Balor goes out of his way to support gay people. Finn Balor has Balor Club for everyone. And this pissed a lot of people off that Finn Balor decided, wanted to show his support to the, the LGBT community. I think his response to their anger, however, was honestly the greatest fucking power. It was so fucking good because people were like, people were straight just being like, well, if it's for everyone, I'm homophobic. Why can't I? Why can't I enjoy you if I'm homophobic? And he was just like, if you want to stop liking me because you're a homophobe, I didn't want you to like me in the first place. And because this, and the reason that I do not think that this is a cash grab for Finn Balor is because I know Finn Balor has actually trained gay wrestlers. And one of the two wrestlers who he considers his favorite people he's ever trained is gay. So I know this comes from a place of genuine camaraderie for him because this is something that impacts his life. One of his best friends is gay. Obviously, he wants to be an ally and he wants to be someone that, you know, young LGBT kids can know, like, people don't hate you. The vast majority of people are cool. And I think that's commendable of him. And I think it was especially commendable of him to, at fucking WrestleMania, debut this and come out with a bunch of LGBT fans from New Orleans. I think that was really genuinely dope of him. Also, the uh, Balor Club for Everyone. I have one of these shirts, actually. It's my favorite shirt. Part of the funding from that shirt, all of the profits go to GLAAD. Not all of the profits, actually. I think it's a portion, but I don't remember what the portion is. But the point is that the money is donated to an actual LGBT organization. So, shout out to Finn Balor for being an ally without being shitty about it. It's so refreshing. It is. It is, really. He's fucking cool, okay? He's, he's cool as hell. He's managed the two very basic skills of being a decent ally to LGBT people, one, and two, not being needlessly gross to the multitude of women that he's trained. There are women who have trained with Finn Balor just because they heard that he's not gross to women. It's That's very true. easy, fellas. And speaking of Finn Balor training a gay man, let's talk about Jordan Devlin and Sexy Star. Not Sexy Star the Luchadora, Sexy Star the Tag Team. Yes, I'm aware it's confusing. That's fair. <laughs> Uh, Sexy Star is a tag team. It's Jack Sexsmith and David Star. Oh, hey. <laughs> Kaya knows about these two. Kaya likes these two. You need to talk more. I don't, I don't like, however, that Sexsmith fights in fucking Uggs. <laughs> it's, it makes me anxious. Jack, your fucking ankles, you might as well be wrestling barefoot. It gives me anxiety. He's gonna snap his ankle. I don't know who thought Uggs would be a good shoe. They're like house slippers. Um, and I want to address something up front about a sexy star. There's gonna be people listening to this saying, Well, David Starr is straight. I know this, because David Starr had a girlfriend at one point. Two things about that. One, the only source I have seen for this purported girlfriend is an offhand tweet from Jack Sexsmith that mentions a lady friend. If that said a gentleman friend, people would be falling over backwards to say that it was just meant a gentleman friend. Two, may I say, as a bisexual man, go fuck yourself. There's that, yeah. I've had girlfriends. I'm not straight. I would have a girlfriend in the future. I'm not straight. Uh, Jack Sexsmith 
is David Starr is not straight. He's he's not really said anything beyond just that he is not straight. He's just kind of a cool dude. I just think he's a cool dude. I just like he's David Starr. He's awesome. I just think he's fun. He's like a less sassy Sony Kiss. You're just saying that because they're both gay. No, I'm saying that because of the way he fights. Now, yeah, that's true. She has seen... You see one... I saw, I saw the one with David against Sex Smith. And I will say, remembering that the only David Starr match you have seen is against Jack Sex Smith, I'm gonna say that I see where you're coming from that. That's not how he usually wrestles. He was just fucking with Jack Sex Smith. Well, he should usually wrestle like that, because it was... I great. mean, I love... I did love it. Very, very, very suggestive watching is the Riptide Rumble match between Jack Sex Smith and David Starr. It's very good. And I... Jack Sexsmith is a pansexual man. Mm -hmm. He calls himself the pansexual phenomenon. He has a pair of leggings that have the pansexual flag on them. He has a pair of leggings that are pink with pansexual symbols all around them. He has a rainbow jacket. He comes out to a song about masturbating. He's one of my favorite people in the world. <laughs> like, he's one of my favorite people in the world. He really is, because he's just so fucking unapologetically out there with all of his shit, and it's really good. It's really phenomenal, and he's a very good Hence wrestler. The Hence the name. Yeah, he's a very good wrestler. Is just like, a, first of all, the... Even if you don't know the story behind the Riptide Rumble match, both of these two men are just so technically good at what they do that it's fascinating to watch. And then in comes, I guess to spice up their little duo, Jordan Devlin, the Irish ace. Uh, Jordan Devlin is one of two wrestlers, the other being Becky Lynch, who Finn Balor has described as like his kids and one of the Aww. favorite people that he's ever trained. And Jordan Devlin. Now, I'm gonna say Jordan Devlin has not come out that I know of. If I'm wrong, somebody correct me. But I'm gonna say I can't imagine two actually gay dudes sitting around going, you know what we need? We need some straight guy. I mean, it would make things a little interesting. Like, we need some straight guy to come. They had a very fun feud. Jordan Devlin and Jack Sexsmith had a feud where they were fighting for David Starr's affection. Oh, And it was, in it was supremely cute. And one thing I appreciated was that through all of this, it is never implied that Jordan Devlin is any less tough. Because that's Jordan Devlin's thing. He's He's a he's just a tough guy. He's an Irish thoroughbred. He's 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 just strong. He's just real strong, Kaya. Strong. He's five foot ten, but he is real strong. Oh so small. <laughs> I can't say anything. I'm only five five. I'm gonna say five ten is a normal height for a person. It's a tiny height for a wrestler. Cause you'll see you'll see like a wrestler on TV and they'll be like, oh man, they're really tiny. And then you'll see a wrestler in real life and you'll be like, oh no, they're as tall as me actually. They're as tall or taller than I am. I just think that it's nice that we do live in a world where a pro wrestling feud can be taken deadly serious when it is two men fighting over a third man. And not in like a jokey way even. And like a legitimately they are fighting for him because they want to be in a gay relationship with him. And I just like... Smiles gaily. Because I'm not going to pretend that wrestling is not very homophobic and transphobic. It's nice to see shit like this, that's all. It's just nice. It's refreshing. And now, the Golden Lovers. We are going to talk about the Golden Lovers. Now, I don't know if Kota Ibushi is gay. It's not any of my business if Kota Ibushi is gay, because he's a very private person. He doesn't talk about most things. There's no reason that he would talk about his sexuality when he barely talks about, like, his cat. Because Kota Ibushi doesn't really talk about anything except for wrestling. So it's not... I'm not that upset that Kota Ibushi may or may not be straight. Kenny o Omega, however, is bisexual. His little <laughs> Japanese boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. I don't ramen, know why. Ramen noodle looking. Yeah, Kaya, Kaya likes to make jokes about how Kenny Omega's hair looks like ramen noodles. And she's not wrong, but I wish she would stop dragging my favorite wrestler every time I mention him. 
Kenny Omega is bisexual, and people are like, well, he's not out as a bisexual. But I don't know what they want him to do. Do they want him to carry around a sandwich board that says, I'm bisexual on it? Anytime he's asked about romantic things, usually when people are like, what's your ideal woman? Or if you were good to go on a date with a woman. Women are very frequently mentioned in these questions in interviews. He immediately changes tracks to talk about both men and women. He has said out loud, I swing both ways on camera. And yes, it was as part of a joke skit, but that's not what the joke was. The joke wasn't that he was bisexual. The joke was that his friend had seen a nude picture of him. And apparently, he's got a lot going on down there. Please stop. <laughs> uh, or at least according this to this This is bit. why I drag him every time you mention him, is because you say things like this. Listen, I didn't write the goddamn skit, okay? You can yell at the Jackson brothers, not me. <laughs> he has listed uh, on his Facebook that he's had since before he started wrestling, that he's into men and women. So it wouldn't make sense for it to be a work, because why would he start a work before he started wrestling? It makes very little sense. People just will bend over backwards to be like he's not bisexual he's not bisexual he's calm down it's not the end of the world if a wrestler you like is bisexual calm down <laughs> the golden lovers have i'm gonna say a fraught history yeah i i think fraught is a good word uh they started in ddt and they were somewhat of a joke gimmick because everything in ddt was a joke gimmick <laughs> Because it was a comedy organization. That's fair. And then they went from DDT to New Japan. And the Golden Lovers broke up the first time. Because they had been cruiserweights. And then, and then, Kota Ibushi became a heavyweight. He moved up weight classes. He could no longer tag team with Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega took this as a personal betrayal. And out of the Golden Lovers' first breakup... We got Kenny the Cleaner. Holy shit, this was a bad character, Kaya. Oh my Sounded. god, this was a bad character. Kenny the fucking what? Kenny the Cleaner. Cleaner is an assassin. And they wanted mm. him to look like a film assassin. And so they had dressed him, they dressed him in all black. And they gave him a black leather jacket and black sunglasses. And they were gonna give him a black beanie. But the thing about, like, curly, long, blonde hair, boy, it just doesn't look scary sticking out of the bottom of a black beanie. Aww. <laughs> it just doesn't look scary at all. It's adorable. That's why they scrapped it. He didn't look that scary without it either. And so he did this for a while. He was he was edgy now. And he was cool now. He hung out with the Bullet Club now. He forgot Japanese overnight, apparently. Uh, and he just, it was bad. It was, a lot of people like Kenny the Cleaner. I'm not gonna stop you. Cause God knows I have questionable taste in men. But come on. <laughs> it's just. I have no taste in men. It's like. If someone, like, if I was, like, make a character that is just the ultimate picture of toxic masculinity and compulsory heterosexuality, and someone's like, okay, here you go. That's what it is. That's what the character is. Again, if you like it, I'm not, I can't stop you. I'm not your dad. And then the Golden Lovers got back together. Yeah. Yay. Temporarily. Oh. <laughs> Kota Ibushi came to rescue Kenny Omega from the Bullet Club, which was just collapsing under his very shoddy leadership. <laughs> so he comes back and he saves Kenny Omega, and there's a whole thing, and then he's friends with the Young Bucks, and then he's not, and then Kenny Omega goes to AEW, and Kota, and they offer Kota Ibushi a job, and he's like, I'm good, actually. I'm, like, cool here. And so, they break up again. I don't think this is the end, per se, of the Golden Lovers. I'm not gonna say it isn't the end, but I'm gonna say, I, I don't think it is definitively the end. Kenny Omega did, I will grant the man this, a lot of wrestlers can't keep their shit together for two months. Kenny Omega kept an overarching plot line for his character for, like, a whole decade. Yeah. Like, a whole fucking decade decade. He's continued this thread from his first match in Japan against Kota Ibushi to his last match in AEW against Chris Jericho. There has been a single thread running through Kenny Omega's career and I think that's very impressive. You know, despite your personal feelings on the man, because I know there are people who don't like him. 
But, you know, there's lots of wrestlers I don't like. I still appreciate their showmanship. I appreciate their dedication to their character. I appreciate their wrestling skills. I will say that it's nice to know that we could wrestle if we wanted to. God, I'd be so bad at it. I mean, yes. We would have to get into wrestling shape to wrestle. We would have to work very hard to wrestle. But the fact that we are LGBT would not bar us from wrestling. Like, we ha- we would have a shot if we wanted to take it. I think that's that's really my overall takeaway from this episode, that I'm glad that we are moving away from caricatures into caricatures. And into actually LGBT people portraying these characters. LGBT, we are like, we are like a community and shit, but like being someone you're not, like a straight man pretending to be gay, a gay man pretending to be trans, all that shit, it's just... Yeah, it's like... Being not you is not fucking cool, yeah. bro. That's another thing that's like, this is just something I like to throw in, just to spice things up. It's gonna upset a few people. Cis LGB people, you are not immune to transphobia. You just aren't. I'm sorry, like, you can still be very transphobic. So just be aware of that if you're about to do some character stuff. And I don't want the show to be, like, a personal attack on cis people, but just saying, (laughs) some of you guys need to calm the fuck down. (laughs) And even, like, there's a weird amount of cis people who are even just mad about gender non-conforming cis people. And it's like, you know they're not trans, right? Like, like you're, like, you're not trans. You're just a masculine woman. Yeah. And people are very mad about Kaya being a masculine woman sometimes. And other butch lesbians I know, they're just so mad. There are more important things in the world. (laughs) worry about which i know is a silly thing to say when we have a wrestling podcast but it's true straight people for the most part are pretty damn cool yeah it's like straight people just act normal listen to gay people just listen to people who are more informed on subjects than you like that's not a wild thing like if i was about to do something and some electrician was like don't do that You'll get electrocuted. I'd be like, oh, totally. Thanks, bro. Because they're a fucking expert. <laughs> yeah. So if, like... They know what they're doing. <laughs> if 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 a gay or trans person tells you not to do something, just listen to them. Just, like, listen. It's not that hard. Unless they're a fucking idiot. I mean, some, if they tell you something about being gay or trans, I should clarify. Don't just do whatever. If I had that power, though, over straight people, it would be a lot of fun. I would definitely abuse it. I, I, I'm saying I shouldn't have the power. <laughs> it would be fun, though. <laughs> Don't give Mike the power. Don't give me any power over anyone ever, because I'm a goddamn idiot. <laughs> but uh, we should be wrapping up now, because we're a little over an hour. Uh, probably going to be less when I edit this down. Sources? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say the What Culture Wrestling article that I used, both because I don't remember the name and because it wasn't very good. <laughs> but what culture articles? Um What Culture is normally a very good source. I just don't like whoever wrote that article about gay wrestlers. Um I used the Hornet uh gay wrestling characters article. Other than that, this was mostly just prior knowledge that I had. Um, you know, watching actual wrestling, which you can get on, like, Hulu. And yeah, do we have any suggestions, suggested watching material, Kaya? We mentioned some earlier in the episode. I'd like to see more Sony Kiss, some more of uh, the Golden Lovers, because I feel like I underappreciate them. Oh, well, I can, I can get you some stuff when we finish recording. But overall, I just think, like, some wrestling for research for the next episode, and we should be good. Um, this is for the audience, not for us. I know, but like, suggest topics for us, please, because we are. We have a list. Hand me the list, Kaya. Do you have it? We have a list of seven things, and. This uh, is one of them. This is one of them. So now we have six other episodes that we could possibly do. Suggest us things, please, because. Please suggest us things, because one of these things I think we could turn into a two parter, but one of these things I'm thinking about it and I don't think it's viable. So suggest us stuff. Please, we're dying. I'm going to say... I I, now understand this is what you meant by suggested washing material. Yeah, yes. Um, Kaya's lucky Luciano posing at me. You know, I had to do it to him. (laughs) She's been doing this all day. I'm going to say, I mentioned earlier, 
Uh, watch the Riptide Rumble match between uh, David Starr and Jack Sexsmith. Watch any Jordan Devlin match. He's so good. Any, you know, suggestions for us to watch, just like with wrestling in general, would be cool. Oh, yeah. Suggestions for episodes, that would be awesome. Oh, uh, watch... Watch Devil or Nothing. It was good. It was good. Sonny Kiss and Nyla Rose are also both in it, and they both did very good. Also, he's not gay, but Orange Cassidy's in it, and I just like him. It's fair. I just like him. I just think he's a lot of fun. Uh, that's all I have. I have nothing further. We will come up with an outro next week. No, we won't.